Welcome back to Sansamed. In the following video we're gonna talk about systemic lupus erythematosus. So let's just divide first the words and then describe it. Systemic refers to that it will affect your whole body. Lupus will refer to that you will get a wolf-like face. You will not become a werewolf, but you might get some abnormal appearances. And erythromatosis because it will affect your blood and its vessels. SLE is an autoimmune disease. You will see it mainly in female African Americans and Hispanics in their reproductive years. So why is it females mainly? It's actually 9 to 1 ratio between males and females. You will see it mainly in females because females are able to be pregnant. And what's the correlation? Because they are able to get pregnant, their immune is usually downregulated at the time of their menstruation and their pregnancy. And therefore, it's easier for an autoimmune disease in general to affect a human. What is important to know about SLE, its signs and symptoms, is essentially the site with high blood flow are the main targets. So you will see how will it affect the brain, the kidneys, the skin, and many other organs. But practically, it can actually affect any organ. As many other autoimmune diseases, there are always a target antigen. In SLE, the target antigen is the nucleus, and therefore there is a production of antinuclear antibodies. But this is not specific because ANA are seen in many different autoimmune diseases, and therefore we cannot assume if somebody has a positivity in ANA in their lab work that they have SLE. What we need to look after are the special components of the nucleus that is quite specific to SLE. Uh, the one that has the highest specificity is the double-stranded DNA, the normal nuclear DNA, is the major target and it's the most specific one. But it can also be against histones, RNA, Smith gene that is a part of the ribonucleoprotein family. It can even affect your phospholipid membrane and uh, spe other specific components such as cardiolipin that is found in the mitochondrial membrane or even the blood components. We'll discuss all of them briefly in a short while. It has a, its association with both type 2 and type 3 hypersensitivity and as we describe the signs and symptoms we will see how they are correlated. What you need to mainly f uh, focus on is that it's mainly a type 3 hypersensitivity due to its immune complex formation, the antigen and antibody in the circulation. It has uh, shown some association with some complement factor deficiency, especially C2 and C4. So what can be causes of SLE? There isn't a single specific cause, but there are multiple factors that will be involved. It can be environmental. Environmentally, it, this can be due to high level of sun exposure. That would explain a little bit why it's more frequent in uh, African Americans and Hispanics. But it can also be due to exogenous pathogens, uh, such as certain bacteria and viruses. But it can also be some genetic factors. Uh, the one that they usually associate it with is some uh, subtypes of major histocompatibility complexes, class 2, specifically MHC, DQ, and DR. There are even occasions where you can get SLE by some drugs you take. If you have uh, some moderate uh, hypertension, the doctor might prescribe to you a drug called hydrolysin. This drug can work as a haptin. Haptin is essentially a non-working molecule that can bind to a tissue and induce inflammatory reactions. These reactions will give similar signs and symptoms as SLE. That's why the drug hydrolysin can induce SLE or SLE-like uh, symptoms. Other drugs that can do the same is procainamide, which is an antiarrhythmic drug, or even isoniazide, which is an anti-tuberculosis uh, drug. Clinically, what would you, we see on people that have SLE? We'd see something called flares and remission. Flares refers to periods of illness, and remission it will be recovery or rebuilding. So this is not a, always a constant process. This will have its ups and downs. So let's start talking about its signs and symptoms. But one of the major rules that we have to always think about is as it's a part of type 3 hypersensitivity and its immune complex formation, it usually affects your vessels. As it affects your blood vessels, 
it will induce inflammation, so we will call it vasculitis. And in the inflammation, there might be several events of thrombosis, which would cause ischemia. So the key, one of the major keywords in SLE will be ischemia, and we will see why. So let's start with the signs, symptoms, and criteria. One thing you might see is a discoid rash. Due to decreased blood flow to your skin, there might be a formation of some skin patches because the, the skin doesn't have its nutrients and therefore they, the skin might pale off a little bit and form a discoid shape. And eventually this can even lead to scar formations. This is usually seen in head areas, in the forehead for instance. Also, due to ischemia to your mucus or even skin, cells will not get their nutrients these will start to die out and this will lead to ulcer formations and uh, usual sites of this are in the mouth area so you will have some oral ulcers. You can also see photosensitivity, essentially that you are sensitive to light and this brings us back to one of the environmental factors that can induce SLE. So you will start to get more skin patches and uh, different ulcers and scars, usually on the face. SLE can also induce arthritis. Arthritis is essentially joint inflammation. This can affect any joint, but it's usually more specific to hands and wrists. But although there is excessive inflammation in your joints, this usually does not cause cartilage destruction, so the problems of arthritis will not be that severe. If you would compare it to another autoimmune disease such as rheumatoid arthritis, in which the cartilage would be damaged and cause permanent damages. One of the things you usually associate uh, with SLE is molar rashes. Molar refers to butterfly shape and this is usually seen on cheeks and nose. And the cause of this uh, is essentially the same as discoid rashes due to decreased blood flow and also due to the fact that the immune complexes can sometimes deposit between your skin layers, between your epidermis and dermis and cause blister formations on the face. The immune markers that we usually see are uh, antihistone antibodies, anti double stranded DNA, anti Smith, um, uh, antiphospholipid membrane, cardiolipin, and uh, blood components. The ones that you should remember mainly is the anti double stranded DNA because this one is the most specific when you refer to SLE. But if the SLE would be drug induced, such as as you remember, hydralazine, procainamide, and um, isoniazide. In this case, the usual uh, antigen is the histone. So the antibodies are mainly fo focused on histone. As you remember from basic physiology, your brain and head requires a lot of blood. So, of course, one of the major affected areas is your brain. So, as there will be decreased uh, blood flow to your brain, this can cause uh, ischemia. There are many uh, neurological problems that can be caused by this ischemia. The most commonly seen in SLE is headache, but it can also cause psycho uh, other problems such as psychosis, anxiety, depression, and many more. As SLE constantly causes inflammation, one of the things you will see in any inflammation essentially is an elevation of erythrocyte sedimentation rate, abbreviated ESR. This is essentially the sedimentation of your red blood cells in one hour. As you remember, the, your kidneys get 20 to 25 percent of your total cardiac output. And uh, when, you have a kid when you have kidney diseases in connection with SLE, we prefer to call them lupus nephritis. Lupus nephritis can cause many different conditions. Uh, this is a very big topic, but we'll just briefly cover that. There are three types of processes that are involved. Uh, diffuse, uh, focal, and membranous lesions. In this video, we'll just mention that what will happen clinically. Clinically, you will see painless proteinuria and hematuria. So you will see a certain amount of protein and blood in your urine. But as this causes many other different kidney problems, you will see uh, other conditions such as glomerulosclerosis, stiffening of your glomerular membranes, and it can lead to other diseases such as nephrotic syndrome. And you will also, of course, see, since this is a kidney-related problem, you will most likely see hypertension. All of this can eventually lead to renal failure.
As you remember, what you will mainly see in SLE is anti-nuclear antibodies. And if you do a test about it, you, you will see positive values of anti-nuclear antibodies. SLE can also go to your serous membranes. And which are your serous membranes? The easiest way to remember it is the triple P. Your peritoneum, your pericardium, and your pleura. And uh, we'll take uh, an example of um, pericarditis. Uh, you can assume that if the pericardium is inflamed as it surrounds the heart, it will affect your normal uh, heart uh, contraction because uh, it will now compress your heart. Uh, when it affects the pleura, it can cause pleural effusion. Uh, when it uh, affects your peritoneum, it can cause abdominal pain. SLE can essentially decrease all of your blood cells. If it, when it decreases your red blood cells, we call it anemia. This anemia is uh, also one type of a group of anemias called autoimmune hemolytic anemias. This will fall under our type 2 hypersensitivity in the first subsection, which is opsonization by cellular depletion. Here you will see that the antibodies will attach themselves to your red blood cells. And when your red blood cells will pass your spleen, they will get stuck in the Billroth cords. And then your splenic macrophages will uh, catch them and digest them. So this will cause a decrease in red blood cell number. And in anemias, you will see different signs such as um, weakness and uh, paleness. If there is a decreasement of your white blood cells, we call it leukopenia. And you can assume, if you have a decreased amount of uh, white blood cells, you're going to be more prone to infections. It can even affect your platelets. The autoantibodies can come and bind to your platelets and they will get stuck in the Billroth cords of the spleen and eventually causing the macrophages to digest them. This is seen in a condition called immune thrombocytopenic purpura. And here you will see other uh, signs and symptoms such as uh, nose bleeding called epitaxis and uh, prolonged menstruational bleeding and also an increase in duration of the bleeding and this is a condition we call menorrhage. So how can you remember all of these signs and symptoms? We can make a simple mnemonic and uh, the simplest that we have found is dopamine rash. This uh, will uh, cover most of the diagnostic features that you will see in SLE. We can also see sometimes a condition called Libman sucks endocarditis. This is essentially that the autoimmunity will affect your bicuspid and tricuspid valves and uh, this will cause vegetations. In this picture we see a summary of everything we spoke. What, is, what are the causes of death and treatments in SLE? As you remember by its hematological problems, decreased uh, level of white blood cells increases the chances of infections. So if it increases the chances of infections, it will increase mainly the infections that you would normally not get when you're healthy. And these are the types of infections we collectively call opportunistic infections. The similar types of infections uh, are also seen in AIDS patients. So what can be an example of uh, these opportunistic infections? Uh, it can be angioninvasive aspergillosis. Another cause of death is uh, end-stage renal disease. So this is uh, another name for renal failure. And there are many conditions in renal failure that can cause death. Another way of death is by pulmonary hemorrhage. So why is that? Sometimes the antibodies uh, can, uh, can bind uh, to loads of your pulmonary alveoli if this occurs aggressively in a short period of time, so essentially acutely, it can cause pulmonary hemorrhage. If this problem would occur for a long time, this can eventually lead to pulmonary fibrosis. And the problem with this is that since your uh, right ventricle supplies the lung, the right ventricle now needs to work a lot harder. And as a result of this, it will enlarge and eventually fail. So this is a condition called core pulmonale. In SLE, you can also get uh, certain lymphomas such as non-Hodgkin. Cerebral infarct can uh, be due to multiple thrombosis that you might get in your cerebral vessels. You can also get thrombosis in your deep veins, usually in the lower limb, 
and we usually abbreviate it DVT, uh, deep venous thrombosis. And this can result eventually in pulmonary embolism, which will cause pulmonary problems. So what are the treatments for SLE? We can use corticosteroids. And uh, the reason for this is essentially by using uh, different types of steroids, by their anti-inflammatory properties, they will decrease the formation of antibodies, which are the major factors that play a role in SLE. We can also give uh, people immunoglobulin therapy. And by this we mean that if you would give loads of immunoglobulins to the SLE patient, their splenic macrophages has a receptor called FC receptor. They would get flooded. So they are now busy. Since they are busy now, they cannot digest your own blood cells. And um, that will help with leukopenia, anemia, and thrombocytopenia. These are usually collectively called pancytopenia. Another way of treatment is splenectomy, essentially removing your spleen, because spleen is the site of the hematological problems. And of course, if you can use corticosteroids, you can also use immunosuppressive drugs. So by depressing the immunity, you will have less antibodies. But this can also be a cause of death, because if you de depress the immunity even further, you can increase the chances of opportunistic infections. So what is the final outcome of all of this? SLE, of course, it can be fatal. But it has actually very good prognosis because this is usually seen in its early stages and therefore it's highly treatable. An example of this is the 20-year survival rate is usually more than 75%. And uh, hopefully now you know more about SLE. Thank you.